Is this the first ever 29.5 C or 2 mini split residential air conditioner in a vehicle? It might be. Well, it's time to put the last key piece on this build here, and that is our top of the line cutting edge EG4 20 C or 2 29.5 mini split air conditioner, which is going on the front of the mom's attic be able to do that we need to make a bracket so i'm going to take the measurements of the mount points here and we're just going to make a simple l bracket that will allow me to bolt this down the other consideration that we have to take into account is the coolant line which as i'm looking at luckily is already pre-insulated this comes with like a 16 foot coolant line as they all do there aren't any lines shorter than this on the internet i mean 16 feet is like as short as they come you can get longer lines like 50 footers and stuff and extensions that's that's easy to find shorter lines like literally five feet six feet that uh, doesn't really exist so we're gonna have to allow some space behind it for the extra coil to go. So it looks like we'll need, I'll probably just do, I don't wanna really cram it because we need to allow airflow to come through here as well because the airflow is gonna come through this and needs to dissipate up and back and behind. Now this is obviously not gonna be like a per manufacturer's true specs installation because they require a certain amount of distance behind these, which we're not gonna have, but I think it'll work just fine. It's not like a heavy duty, push it to the max type of installation anyway. But I also don't want it to look stupid from the, from the side profile or from the front when you're looking at it. You know, I don't, I don't want it to look like it's hanging off the front of the box, the mom's attic, like just hanging out there. So we have to balance again, as always, the aesthetics, the form and the function. So we need to run the lines from here across through and then into the mom's attic, which will be right here. The mini split itself, that blower will be basically right here this close literally behind it yeah so in theory it's pretty simple we just need to make a bracket and then the hard part is actually going to be getting this up there i don't know how that's going to happen i have to probably actually buy a scaffold or maybe i can use the tractor to lift a pallet jack up there or something i don't know that's going to be that part has yet to be determined we'll figure that out when we get to it but for now we got to get this bracket made This is what our completed bracket looks like. Uh, just a simple angle. And I put a little bit of a kind of a backrest on the top so that there's no, no way that the unit can like flex backwards if there's heavy wind or something like that. Not that I think it would, but just as a extra piece of reassurance. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna get some holes drilled on the back, then we're gonna paint it and then we're pretty much ready to mount four inches in from the bottom because we got that we got the aluminum frame of the box that we're working around and there is a little bit of overlap about an inch and a half or two inches so on the top and the bottom of the mom's attic so we're going to make sure that we're in far enough that we're not drilling into that aluminum
So clearly I need to buy some kind of scaffolding to do this properly. But I don't currently have that. I actually tried to buy scaffolding from Harbor Freight uh, two days ago, but they were out of stock and I don't really have the time to sit around and wait. So what I'm gonna do is I have to actually run the, run the tractor so that it keeps hydraulic pressure. So I'm gonna get my gas mask on, my respirator, so I don't choke to death on the carbon monoxide that's gonna be pumping into this shop while that happens. We're gonna get the holes drilled so I can see on the inside where I need to put additional framing. So we're gonna get the holes drilled, turn everything off, go on the inside, put additional framing in there, drill the holes through that, and then get the bolts that'll go all the way through uh, both the framing and the wall. line to work with.
All right, so we got the lines, drainage, and our connection control cables all routed through the wall. All we gotta do is get them connected. So I'm gonna get back up there with the tractor. We'll connect the actual line from the inverter as well as all this other stuff and we should be done. What could go wrong? So I don't know if that's uh, full speed right there or not, but that's super quiet. I mean, if you're walking on the side of the truck, unless you're in the front and you're like looking at it, you're not even going to really realize that that's running. So I'll give you a little bit of a, some just regular talking volume speech so you can compare near uh, the same distance how loud that compressor really is. Let's go inside and see how cold it is. Yeah, that's very cold. Very cold. You probably can't even hear that at all. Actually, as I'm standing here, the inverter is still louder than that. So, is this the first ever 29.5 C or 2 mini split residential air conditioner in a vehicle? It might be. Cutting edge technology, cutting edge technology. It's everywhere. Everywhere, that's how we do it. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to support the channel or you want to get consultation on your own builds, you can get direct access to me over at technobarbarian.locals.com for as little as five bucks a month. I always appreciate your support, and I'll see you guys on the next one.